Tonight, memories of the Beatles. Sing it with me, love. One, two, three, four. Hi there, how are you? Hi, how's it going this week? Do you think anyone will mistake us for the Beatles? No, it's okay. I don't think so. <laughs> I've got the Beatles on my mind this week. And why is that? Because this month is the 30th anniversary of the Beatles' first hit single. 30 years, Joel? <laughs> I think I remember that. That's pretty scary. Did you have a favorite Beatle? Um, I guess if I had to pick one, it'd be John Lennon. Yeah, see, I could never choose between John or Paul. Mm. I thought they were both great. Break the lemma. Yeah. Can you imagine meeting the Beatles? No, oh, no, that would be fabulous. I know. Well, this week I get a phone call from a mm -hmm. gentleman. Mm -hmm. When he was 18, he interviewed the Beatles, he photographed the Beatles, and he recorded one of their live concerts in Germany, and he said, how'd you like to come over and check it all out? And he's here in the area? He's in Orleans, George Miller. We're going to meet him in just a little while. Whoa, can't wait for that. Uh-huh. How about some memories of the Beatles? <laughs> If you go back in 66 and ask me, well, how long will this group survive? I would have said a year or two. It's hard to believe that they still talk about the Beatles. separate ways, but their music's still being played. They've lasted. I enjoy playing music. The musical memories of George Miller's youth come to life every time he listens to one of his original mint condition Beatles 45s. George, like many, is a big fan of the Fab Four, but unlike most Beatle maniacs, he had the rare opportunity to meet, interview, and photograph the group, even record one of its concerts. He was just 18 years old, a budding DJ at radio station Canadian Army Europe in Germany. I'm your DJ this evening, and my name is George Miller. Tonight on Teen Time, we're featuring the Beatles. Every country cries out for the Beatles to make an appearance, and not since the day Elvis hit the scene has anyone ever had the fantastic sight of girls screaming, shouting, and crying as they see the Beatles, if they are lucky. In this country, Germany, the scene is no different. The place was Essen, here in Germany, and I consider myself one of the lucky ones. What was the atmosphere like? Oh, ph phenomenal. It was, it was great. It was a, girls were fainting everywhere. You've seen it on movies and that, but to actually be there. I, I took the time out to look back and, and just see the girls being carried away. <laughs> Armed with this inexpensive but functional Instamatic camera and this tape recorder, George recorded his experience for radio listeners not lucky enough to witness Beatlemania in person. On top of the speaker, so I'm looking directly at Paul McCartney right in front of me. The Ringo's to the right, John's to the left, and George Marshall to the left. It's phenomenal. People everywhere. I've never seen the likes of it. This is an experience. Let's try this more music. When I saw him on the stage, I took advantage and just started flashing pictures like crazy. Uh, it also came in handy during the press conference which we, we had for the Beatles. Um, during the interview of the Beatles, talking to them, I asked if I can get their photos, uh, you know, candid shots of them, individual shots as well as group shots. And what was their response? There was no problem. They said, by all means, snap away. At which point, uh, I got a bit of a hard time from Ringo Starr. Didn't realize he was a camera buff. I, I wanted to talk to him about drums, being as I was a drummer in a band. And all he wanted to talk about was my cheap camera. <laughs> George still has all the photos and negatives from the concert, 
and is trying to determine their value. And nearly three decades after the event, George's teenage radio program still attracts the interest of Beatle lovers. Everybody wants to see what you have. Can we hear the program? Can we see the photos? And uh, I don't want to bore anyone with it. I, I have one friend in particular who keeps saying every time he introduces me, he says, this is George, he interviewed the Beatles. And I keep saying, Dave, you don't have to introduce me. I mean, that's long gone, you know. So it's, it's, it's the past, but it's... It's nostalgia. And it's a once-in-a-lifetime moment George Miller will never forget. There's Beatles fans everywhere. The Beatles are still somehow, their music's being aired and featured. And it's, it's, it's just fond memories. Thank you for listening and tune in tomorrow at 6 for Pop Some Prey, where I'll feature more of the Beatles. So for now, take care. Till next time. <laughs> Thanks a lot for being with us. We'll see you. Bye bye. Come on. Shortly after having convinced the Cheyenne to accept the government's offer of blankets and supplies, Dr. Mike is helping to save them from a typhus epidemic she feels responsible for spreading. Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman, tonight at 8. Melrose Place is next on CJOH-TV.